Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be walking you guys through how I made this 3D printed robot arm, which is a project I'd wanted to tackle for a long time. In this video, we're going to be talking through every step of the process, including the planning, modeling, printing and assembly. And I'll also share how the first time around things are going to go exactly according to plan. Now, as far as this kind of project goes, this is by no means the best one out there on the internet. In the description, I'll leave some links to some better projects I've found. And with all that out of the way, let's get straight into it. So to start off with, I went online to look up other examples of 3D printed robot arms just to get some inspiration. I checked out a load of projects on printables, cults and Google Images. And I also found a couple of YouTube videos that I'll link in the description below. All these images and videos were excellent guides and really helped me get the overall idea of how to approach this project. Once I'd seen all these images and videos, I felt like I had enough information to start taking the first steps and I'd kind of figure out the rest as I went along. So this was the first finished design and I was pretty happy with the way it was looking at least from Fusion 360. So I decided to get everything printed and put it together just to see how it looks and acts in real life. This is what the first design looked like once it was all printed and assembled. Although it was a good start, there was definitely some room for improvements. So for starters, the arm once it was assembled was just way too small. It was barely bigger than a spool of filament measuring at about 20 centimeters and that basically just limited what it could pick up so size was definitely an issue in this case. And secondly the choice of motor wasn't great either. In this first instance I decided to use these SG90 motors which are really good hobbyist motors. The problem is, is that they're very weak, so once the arm was extended, it had difficulty sort of pulling itself back up, which means it would basically get stuck. Obviously not ideal. And lastly, the way I designed the gripper mechanism also left a bit to be desired. It was a little bit too lax, you can see here that when it was opening and closing there was way too much movement, so it wasn't gripping anything. And secondly, it was putting way too much pressure on the motor, so I actually burnt a couple out. Armed with the experience from my first attempt, I was determined to make a better second version. And this is the completed model for the second version. It was taller had a wider stand so it's a bit more stable and the gripper mechanism had also been improved so at this point I was feeling quietly confident. This time I decided to use the MG996R motor which is bigger and stronger than the SG90. That means it should be perfect for moving my robot arm around in all the different directions I have planned. Once I was ready with my design, it was time to load up some black PETG which is my material and colour of choice for this project and get everything printed. Whilst the 3D printers were hard at work, it was time to start thinking about the electronic side of this project. For the microcontroller, I decided to use the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. I didn't really need the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capabilities, it's just that this is an absolute powerhouse, it's really well supported and just easy to work with, so I thought it would be a great fit for this project. And the other main component was the PCA9685 servo driver. This is a really really handy piece of kit. Not only is it quite small, but it also has a lot of pins for you to attach your servos directly onto, rather than having to use the Arduino and loads of breadboard wires and everything else. And I quickly fixed the Arduino and the driver onto this 3D printed mount that I made and printed, just to make things a little bit easier. Now given that coding is not my strongest area, I decided to use ChatGPT to help me with this project. 
I told her that I was making a 3D printed robot arm that was going to be controlled with servos, my microcontroller and that would be using the servo driver to help and in no time flat I had a sketch that was, although it wasn't the perfect finished product, it gave me a launch pad to start building on. And after a little bit of trial, error and tweaking I was able to get the final code that I used for this project. Right guys, so here's the final assembled robot arm. Let's go through how it's all been put together and how it works. The whole project is powered by my benchtop power supply and this is connected directly to the circuit and powers the Arduino, servo driver and of course the motors. I modified the gripper design so that the arms were a little bit bigger and also a little bit more curved helping them grab onto things a little bit better and then I also printed these TPU teeth to give it a bit more grip. I also made it a lot taller and bigger in general than the first version. And to control each of the motors I'm using this Python app that allows me to control each individual motor one at a time. Each motor is given a slider interface which is quite intuitive and easy to use and it just allows for finer control. Now that we had everything assembled and the software ready, it was time to put everything to the test and see if this arm could actually lift. So guys, as you can see, this robot arm is indeed able to pick up light objects and move them from one location to another, and that's something I'm really, really happy with. However, through making this project and seeing the end result, there are definitely a couple of areas of improvement that I've identified, and if I was to make this again, these are the three main things I'd like to improve on. Firstly, the whole robot arm as a structure isn't very stable. So if you move any of the motors too quickly, it almost starts to rock back and forth and that just limits how fast you can move the motors. This may be because the base isn't heavy enough. So if I was to make this again, I'll definitely think of a way of maybe adding a bit more weight to the base. Even if that's something as simple as some ball bearings or something, just to give it a bit more weight to so stop it from moving as much. But that's definitely the first thing I'd improve. When I designed the second version, I did give it a slightly larger stand or mount to sit in so I printed this sort of arrangement in five different parts and super glued it all together trying to give it some really good surface area but I don't think it really did the job that well. Secondly the cable management well it's just non-existent. I'd really like to think of a way of enclosing the, all the electronics and hiding the cables a little bit better mostly for cosmetics but you know you want to make things look a little bit better as well so that's that's definitely something I'd like to work on next time. And thirdly, in terms of the way the arm is controlled, although the Python app is easy to use, it's a little bit clunky and rigid and you have to sort of look between the screen and the arm and sort of go back and forth. I did actually try to make another way of controlling this arm using potentiometer, so a more physical way. The electronics were just too complicated for me and not to mention the wiring was an absolute mess. So I actually went to the Python app as almost a second backup option. If I was to make the project again, I'd definitely try and think of a more hands-on way of controlling the arms. That's a little bit more intuitive. And that brings us to the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. 
this is definitely one of the more enjoyable projects that I made and I think it's something that I'd like to do more of in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and leaving some comments down below and I'll see you all in the next video.